are iceberg hunting in one of the most remote places on the planet. Beautiful. It really is beautiful. This is George Karunas, and he might just be crazy. I haven't quite made up my mind. I'm ready. George is an adventurer and modern day explorer, and he's about to go where no one has gone before. Yeah, right into that notch. He's planning to jump onto this iceberg, and then he's going to try to climb it. Climbing on an iceberg is one of the most dangerous things that I, that I do. This is uh, something I can't really recommend people do. And I'm gonna go on top, climb up the iceberg as high as I can, and then plant a satellite tracking beacon on the iceberg itself. So then I can see how this iceberg is moving with the currents and the different winds and the shifting tides here to sort of get an idea of the movement of these birds. Whoa! Don't lose your balance. That would be bad. That would be very bad. We're off the coast of Newfoundland, the most easterly point of North America. This stretch of wild ocean is known as Iceberg Alley. Each floating ice sculpture is estimated to be at least 10,000 years old. These icebergs take a couple of years to travel down from Greenland. They calve off of these glaciers, they go to the Canadian Arctic, they swirl around in the currents up there, and then eventually drift down off the coast of Newfoundland and eventually out to sea where they melt. Icebergs are very particular because they're huge, they can be the size of apartment buildings, but they're also unstable. They want to move, they want to rock and roll. Pieces always want to break off. Sometimes they flip or even disintegrate and literally some of them will explode. So it's really dangerous. Dangerous also to anything that gets in their way. Not far from here, an iceberg sank the unsinkable in the world's most famous shipping disaster. After the sinking of the Titanic, the International Ice Patrol was formed, and that is a group that will monitor and track the location of icebergs. It's very important for safety uh, to know where they're located and to understand how to avoid them. Kelly Dodge is an engineer with Sea Corps and has been studying the icebergs for 19 years. Let's have a look at that, zoom in on that. She leads a team of engineers and researchers who track them. The information helps crews on fishing vessels, cargo ships and oil rigs know when danger is approaching. If an iceberg hits an oil or gas rig, it could cause an environmental catastrophe. When they get too close, specialist crews either tow them away or break them up. I think the difference nowadays is that we have much greater means to track and find out where they are. So we use aerial reconnaissance, we use satellite reconnaissance, we use ship information, reports from individuals from shore. So we have uh, much more information available uh, to us in order to, to track them. To give you a sense of the size of that iceberg, my kayak's about four metres long, which makes that big chunk of prehistoric ice look about the size of an apartment building. But that's only what we can see. 90% of it is below the surface, which means it's actually about the size of a football stadium. What lies beneath is just one reason they are so unpredictable and so dangerous. Captain Rick Stanley helps brave divers explore the underbelly of these floating giants. How unstable are icebergs? They are very unstable. They're unpredictable. You know, I know enough about icebergs to know nothing about icebergs. <laughs> they are something that we don't know much about. And the unknown is a big part of the attraction for Captain Rick. He's been diving icebergs for decades and filmed this breathtaking underwater footage. It's sculptured by the sea and it's works of art by Mother Nature. Diving around an iceberg or climbing one, what's more dangerous? 
It's way more dangerous to climb an iceberg than dive on an iceberg. Uh, you have the water as your protector uh, when you're underwater. But if you're climbing on an iceberg and shit happens, that the iceberg starts to explode, well, that's it, it's lights out. It could be very uh, catastrophic for, for anybody that's, uh, that's close to them. George Karunas knows the risks. The host of TV show Angry Planet has been called a real-life Indiana Jones. I've rappelled down inside active volcanoes. I've been chasing tornadoes for 20 years. I drive into the eye of hurricanes. Oh, boy. Basically, any time that Mother Nature is flexing her muscles and wants to maybe harm you, I'm usually nearby with a camera rolling. Why? <laughs> We spend so much time going from our air-conditioned, climate-controlled houses to our climate-controlled car to our climate-controlled jobs. We spend very little time experiencing the true awe of nature, seeing something that's bigger and more powerful than you. I'm ready. I'm ready. And feeling the ground shake, feeling the wind on your face, being in the presence of these tremendous forces makes me feel humble, it makes me feel awe, and it's, it's like a drug. I just keep coming back. And this iceberg season, he's found a fresh summit to be conquered. How's it looking to you, George? I'm really liking the angle. I should be able to get onto this, no problem. Every iceberg that you step on is likely a spot where no human has ever set foot. 12 people have been on the surface of the moon. You step onto that iceberg, only one person's ever been there. We're off the coast of Canada with adventurer George Karunas. Every year, between 400 and 800 icebergs reach this remote stretch of water known as Iceberg Alley. They've travelled thousands of kilometres across the open ocean. Here, they will melt and disappear forever. They're like fingerprints. Each one is unique. They all have their own almost a personality. They're almost like they're living creatures. This thing is melting know, really fast. Yeah. All this texturing, all was all underwater. And see how this, this little rivulet's coming off and dripping. This iceberg is melting before our eyes. As they flip and roll, they melt in different patterns. When they break, sometimes it sounds like a gunshot going off, like a shotgun is cracking. And of course, all the pieces splashing into the water. And then once all the pieces of ice break off, there are microscopic air bubbles, hundreds, sometimes thousands of year old. And all of that air bubbles up to the surface and it sounds like champagne. It's this effervescence of ancient air that bubbles up all around the bergs. You can see these bubbles coming up from underneath. This is like the champagne bubbles that you described. Exactly. It's like a giant champagne glass. So you have this complete symphony from the, the crashing of the percussion to the gentle strings to just the choir in the background, and it's just a wonderful experience. But the experience George has come here for is to go where no person has gone before. There we go. Ready, George? We're getting in position now. Authorities discourage people from standing on the icebergs. You're on. George insists no one should copy him. Comms are good. He's gone to painstaking lengths to make the climb as safe as possible. All right, here we go. <laughs> Good luck. Stay safe. Do you worry about whether you're going to make it back alive? Yeah, there are dangers, but I try to be as safe as, as possible. To, to minimize the risk, you can never eliminate risk. But if it's my day, then it's my day. Oh, wow. <laughs> this slope is so perfect. Really? It looks pretty scary from here, mate. George is a little bit nuts. No, excuse me, he's a lot nuts. We don't just put anybody on an iceberg. When he gets off my boat, he's on his own, really. We are there with uh, you know, the safety divers and uh, ready to uh, react. But uh, George is, uh, yeah, he's pushing the envelope. How's it feel out there? My big concern is slipping off of this thing because the ice is so brittle. Whoa! Don't lose your balance. That would be bad. I'm just going to keep going up. OK. Woo! We're at the top! The 
view up here is unbelievable. Got a 360 degree view of Conception Bay and it is a perfect, beautiful day up here. What are you feeling when you're up on an iceberg? It's amazing. These icebergs are so beautiful. It's like climbing a sculpture, Mother Nature's works of abstract art. And for that brief moment in time, when you're on it, you have become part of that natural art exhibit in harmony with nature and becoming part of that iceberg, even for that brief time that you're there. All right, Ange, I'm gonna place the beacon. Okay. George is interested in tracking the iceberg for research and mounts a beacon at the top. He can trace its life cycle and see how fast it's melting. It's been a bumper season for icebergs this year. Is that evidence of global warming? Well, it's hard to say. It's, it's hard to pin any one single iceberg season on climate change or global warming. It's, it's only one data point in a long series of data points. And by averaging them and looking at trends over multiple years and decades, then we can get a really good idea. But certainly, there's value in each data point. Okay. Slow and steady. We're starting to see more of these extreme events. We're seeing more floods, we're seeing more droughts, and we're also seeing changes in the icebergs that are coming off of Greenland. Speed up. <laughs> you did it. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Before we head off, I have my own close encounter with this ancient creation. Incredible. George, that's amazing. The first and probably last time I will ever touch an iceberg. Oh, hopefully not last. <laughs> After we left, the iceberg rolled, and within days, George's tracking equipment revealed it had completely vanished. As much as I love these icebergs, uh, I know that they're all going to melt. They're temporary constructs. And so you have to really just appreciate the moment. That's a great thing about icebergs, is that they force you to think about the past, appreciate the present, and understand that nothing in this life is permanent. Enjoy what you see in front of you at the time, and then just let it go.